called me like police were there at my house. Yeah. Yeah. So every, like everything now is changing now. Every, but same. why are the police off to you? That's why I don't know. I think there's an informer somewhere somehow. You know. Did did these guys split? Which one? Your so, friend. Yeah, Caesar. Did they tell anything? No. Even them, they are in a, on a run. Oh, is it? Yeah. Because I think. Uh, no, because these boys made it big. I told you to let them do it outside the house and take the bags and the rings, and then they didn't take the watch or anything. They just left everything. They just left everything there. You see. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Thank you again for joining me here today. So this case was once again recommended by one of you guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all the suggestions, so thank you very much and keep them coming. So this case that we're going to dive into today is another love triangle case, which kind of went horribly wrong. And I'm sure that most love triangles don't end in complete happiness, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. On this channel, when things go wrong, they go really, really wrong. But today's case is going to take place in Port Elizabeth in South Africa, and we are going to talk about the Jade Paniatu case. So without any more rambling from my side, let's get into it. Intended for mature audiences only. Jade was a beautiful young lady who was said to be very loving, kind, and generous to everyone that she met. She was hardworking and she had goals and aspirations to be a teacher. So just after she left high school, she was out with some friends and she met a young man named Christopher Paniatu and they hit it off right away and they started dating. So like I said, Jade's goals and aspirations were to become a teacher. So once she left high school, she did enroll in university and to study education. And remember I told you about Christopher Paniatu, the man that she met? Well, while Jade was busy studying, Christopher was running his family business. His family were quite well off and they decided to expand their chain of OK stores here in South Africa. And Christopher took over one of these OK stores. So if we fast forward a bit, everything was happy with Christopher and Jade. And eventually Jade ended up graduating and getting her degree in education. And she was now a qualified teacher. Christopher was now running this OK store quite well. So Christopher was now getting the knack for running this business and he decided to open a different kind of business which was like a restaurant slash pub and he was thoroughly enjoying this and employing quite a few people here as well. But as his OK store was growing, he needed more staff. And one of the staff that he needed was a personnel manager and he employed a young lady named Chanel Cows. But Christopher's eyes started to wander towards this young 22-year-old woman. And eventually Christopher and Chanel started having an affair. And sometimes when you like somebody, it's kind of difficult to stop like looking at them and touching them and finding their jokes hilarious when it's actually a really boring joke. But this became quite obvious to the people in the store. And eventually Christopher's father started coming in and out of the store, checking books. And he started noticing Christopher's wandering eye towards the Chanel lady. And he said, listen, I know what you're doing and you better stop this now or you can kiss your inheritance goodbye. And Christopher was like, okay, okay, calm down. Let's see if we can figure things out. And he kept things now with Chanel very hush hush. He was definitely still having the affair with Chanel but a lot less public now. And just after his father found out about Christopher and Chanel's affair, Christopher decided that now was the appropriate time to propose to Jade. So in 2013, Christopher and Jade ended up getting married. They looked like a very happy newlywed couple. And to their friends, they looked exceptionally happy. And that was all that mattered to Christopher's family as well as Jade's family. By the way, Christopher's father did not tell Jade about the affair. He thought that this would just ruin the relationship and that's not what he wanted to do. He was really fond of Jade and he really loved Jade. So just after Jade's marriage to Christopher, she started working at an all-girls school in PE. And during her time working here, she actually realized that one of her friends from her old school, Cherise Swanepoel, also worked here. So these two hit it off immediately. They connected like it was old times and they started hanging out all the time. Cherise Swanepoel and Jade lived around 30 to 40 minutes away from each other and they were heading in the same direction. So Cherise suggested that they maybe have a lift club and they take each other to work basically and they can just alternate who collects who. So basically the rules for this lift club was that you just WhatsApp me when you're three minutes out so I can lock up and get outside to make sure that I'm in time for you to pull up. So almost every day, Jade would wait outside the complex that her and Christopher shared 
and she would wait outside at around half past six every day to wait for Cherise. So this lift club happened basically almost every day for a couple of years. And when you are in such a close proximity with someone, you share things, you share intimate details. And Jade eventually came forward and said to Cherise, you know, my relationship with Christopher is not as it seems. We are really struggling as a couple. And sometimes it's very difficult for us to kind of connect. He's always at work. He's never spending any time here. And he always finds his work more important than us trying to build our relationship. Jade would go on to tell Sharice that they fought often. He often stormed out of the house and went back to work. And Christopher was still having the affair with Chanel from the OK store, remember? And they now have been having an affair for three years. And at the time that Christopher was having this affair with Chanel for the three years, he would take her on trips everywhere, they would go on holiday, and Christopher would say that he's going on work trips because they want to go kind of international with OK and kind of spread it around Africa more. I guess it's believable, but he was actually taking Chanel on holidays. He was also spoiling Chanel with gifts, expensive gifts, and slowly but surely, Christopher Paniotu started getting into debt. He could not keep up this side life, basically, supporting two people. And I say supporting quite loosely because they both had jobs, but he was spoiling these two women, mostly Chanel. So Christopher applied for a loan from the bank and he was in the process of getting a 2.2 million rand loan. So like I said, Shanice, Jade's friend, and Jade would have this lift club. So it was no different on the 21st of April, 2015. Jade texted Shanice and she said, I'm gonna go downstairs now, I'll meet you outside. And this was at 27 minutes past six. Remember I said that Jade would usually wait outside for Shanice at half past. So Jade then left her apartment, locked the door, walked down the stairs to go towards the entrance of the complex. And before she could get to the gate to open the complex gate, she was struck behind the head with something heavy, pushed into the boot of a car, and driven off by three men in a vehicle. True to time, Shanice then arrives at half past six, and Jade is nowhere to be seen. After just texting Shanice that she was going to be outside at half past. Shanice is a bit uncomfortable about this, but she thinks, okay, maybe Jade just ran up quickly to fetch something. But Shanice did start to panic the more time went on because this was incredibly out of the norm for Jade. So as Shanice was busy waiting outside for Jade, Jade was still, remember, in the boot of this car with the three men. The three men then stopped on the side of the road. They took Jade out of the boot and they put her then on the back seat with another man next to her and two men in front. So while they were busy driving around the city of PE, the three men said to her, we want your watch, we want your rings, and we want your bank cards and any other money that you have on you. So Jade obliged, she gave them everything she had, and she was now hoping that they would just drop her off because they got everything they wanted. But they ended up going to an ATM. They took out as much money as they could the first time. Then they started driving to the outskirts of PE and they started going down a dirt road. Now the same with the Hannah Cornelius case that we spoke about the other day. I can't imagine at all what these women must have gone through. And I think the stress is that you've given them everything they have. What else do they want? And also I think what may have been going through Jade's mind is she was maybe a little bit hopeful while they were still driving around the city limits. And then once they started going through the dirt road, I think that she knew that it wasn't going to end well. Because why else would people be going into a remote area if they got everything that she thought that they had wanted? But obviously I can't put myself in their shoes. I don't understand it at all. But that's just maybe a thought that's going through my mind. So anyway, these men now have stopped in a remote area down a dirt road. They pull Jade out of the car tell her to get on her knees, and they then put two shots in the back of her head. They then left Jade in the middle of nowhere, they got back in the car, they drove back to the city of PE, and they withdrew even more money from other cars that Jade had left in her purse. So now that Jade has been murdered, we will skip back to Shanice. Remember, Shanice is still waiting outside. This all happened to Jade in such a quick time that Shanice is still waiting outside the complex of Jade's house. And Shanice is now completely beside herself because Jade has not come out. Her texts are not going through at all and she is completely ignoring Shanice, which is completely out of the norm. Shanice then calls Christopher to say, listen, there's something wrong. Your wife is not coming down. Christopher starts panicking and they then start calling family and the entire Paniyatu family, as well as Jade's family, decide to go on a manhunt for Jade. They put posts all over social media. Then the social media hashtag find Jade 
started around PE, and this was going through our Facebook, Instagram, everywhere that they could post it, it was happening. The Paniatus also offered a 100,000 Rand reward for any information that could bring back Jade safely. Some sources say it was 150,000 Rand, some sources say it was 50,000 Rand, but it was a lot of money for information about Jade. Christopher and Shanice called the police and they were sent out to now investigate the situation of what was happening with Jade Paniatu. Sadly, the next day, on the 22nd of April 2015, a police helicopter was sent up to investigate any surrounding areas of PE and that's when they came across Jade's body in the field. Christopher Paniatu and Jade's family were notified of the horrible discovery. The people of PE were incredibly invested in this case because they really wanted a good outcome for Jade and her and Christopher. They felt so bad for Christopher, he was really grieving, he was crying and he was upset and they just wanted some happiness to, in this whole case. So when they found Jade's body, the people of PE were incredibly devastated. On the 28th of April, Jade's funeral was held and so many people turned up to pay their respects. These included her students, her family and the public. As a side note, remember there were three men in the car that murdered Jade. Well, these three men decided that they were going to go once they murdered Jade, to a traditional healer in South Africa, which is the Sangoma. They went to the Sangoma and they asked for protection and to ensure that the police would not find them. And this is what they went to. And the reason I'm telling you this is that it's important for later. So after Jade was found by police, a full manhunt pursued and people were calling and giving tips. Anything that people would tell police, police would go and investigate. The police then got an anonymous phone call from someone stating that they overheard three men talk to us on Goma about the Jade Paniatu case and that these three men should be looked into. The three men mentioned, I will put a picture up here for you. The police were very interested in what these three men had to say for themselves. After the three men were taken into custody, Luanda Sione sang like an absolute canary. He blamed everything on Christopher Paniatu because he said that Christopher masterminded the entire thing. Christopher gave every piece of information he could about Jade in terms of the jewelry that she would usually wear, how much her jewelry was worth, the clothes she was going to wear that day, what time she would be outside the complex, everything Christopher had told Luyandu. Luyandu Sione was one of the men that worked for Christopher at his pub slash restaurant and this is how the two of them met. So police were very interested in what Luyandu Sione had to say for himself and very interested in the talk about how Christopher was involved in everything. So police were like, okay, cool, Leander, you got yourself into this mess. Let's see how far you can get yourself out of this mess. So police then told Leander to set up cameras and microphones in his car, and that if they called Christopher, saying anything that could put him in prison and admit guilt to Jade's murder, then they would possibly give him immunity for this entire case. And that is exactly what happened on the 29th of April, 2015. I will now show you some snippets of the exact recording that we undertook in his car. Police were there to my house. Yeah? Yeah. So every, like, everything now is changing now. Every, but why are the police off to you? That's why I don't know. I think there's an informer somewhere, somehow. You know? I haven't they asked you. Eh? I haven't they asked you yet? Yes, they asked me. But now, but now you've been phoning me all day and they're tracing my phone, don't know. So, the thing is, who, who could I call? Because I have no one to call. I, I know, call. okay, but now you must destroy it. Then I, I have to tell them you phoned me. Otherwise, they're going to think I'm involved. Yeah. So, so you need to destroy that phone now. The phone and the, and the SIM card, my boy. Both. But that's what I said to you. It became a kidnapping and then a murder instead of just making it a, a robbery outside the house. No, because these boys made it big. I told you to let them do it outside the house and take the bags and the rings and then they didn't take the watch or anything. They just left everything. They just left everything there. You see, so it looks like a hit now. So they are after me and that's why I can't meet you just like this in front of people, Tando. Okay. okay. Don't find and don't SMS me. They're watching yeah. the SMSs because well, you said it isn't that you so this video was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for Christopher. I'm not sure if police were live streaming it or if Luanda actually drove straight away after Christopher got out of the car and showed them this video because at 11 p.m. that night, police rocked up to Christopher's house and they arrested him, took him into custody, and all four men were then put on trial. By the way, I remember I said that Luanda was supposed to get immunity, but once he got onto the stand, he started saying that, that police coerced him and that the entire confession that he had given 
was false. So this, of course, had a very bad look on Leander because now he was seen in the court as a hostile witness and this was not exactly a great look. So the court was like, okay, cool, you want to bash police, we're actually taking your immunity away. Here's number one, was found guilty of murder on count four, and not guilty of the remaining counts. Here's number three, was found guilty of robbery with aggravating circumstances on count two, guilty of murder on count four, and not guilty of the remaining counts. Here's number four, was found guilty of conspiracy to murder on count one, and not guilty. All of the men were tried together. Two of the men and Christopher were charged with conspiracy to murder and the actual murder of Jade Poniatu, and they were sentenced to life. And that is the video of Jade Poniatu. I found this case very frustrating because it's just such an unnecessary way to go about trying to get a divorce from someone. If you really don't want to be with them, divorce them. If Christopher was so unhappy, he could have just gotten a divorce. I understand it may have looked bad, and yes, his inheritance may have been taken away, but if you really own these businesses and you really worked so hard for these businesses, they should be yours. But I understand why it shook the people of PE to its core, because it was just such an unnecessary crime. Not that any of these crimes are necessary that we talk about, but you get what I'm saying. Thank you again so much for the suggestion for this case. It was incredibly interesting. And please keep your suggestions coming. Thank you so much for your kindness and your support, everyone. And I hope you have a great day further. Stay safe out there. And I hope you are entertained. Bye.